Okay, so this is uh, this this is the D class, but it covers everybody in ninth grade today. We're reviewing for Inferno tomorrow, and let me just throw these questions out there. Raise your hand uh, if you know the answers. Starting with number one, when was he born and when did he die? I think it's one of the few dates I've asked for. Yes. I can't hear you. Well, since he died, 13. Right. When did he die? 13. Right. 1265. You got those? 1265, 1321. Uh, in what year is the story set? 13. Yeah. 1300. Uh, tell me about Beatrice. Yes. Right. How did she influence Dante? How did he use her image or her idea? He like saw her as someone divine, someone heavenly, and like he basically like imagined her as perfect. So she represents grace, God's grace, uh, unmerited uh, blessings, and so forth. Yes, good answer. Um, all right. Explain who the Guelphs were and two of the things they believed in. Yes. I'm not sure if the people can hear everything. I may repeat it. Uh, forgive me for repeating what you said, but the political party and what were the two traits? They, um, they opposed the emperor and supported the pope. Opposed emperors, support pope. They were middle class, democratic. All four of those. I only asked for two here. Somebody tell me about the Ghibellines. Uh, yes. They're the opposite. Be, be specific in two oh, areas. The uh, political party in Florence, they opposed the Pope and uh, supported the Emperor. All right, so just flip those things with the uh, the Guelphs, and yes, they support the Emperor. The uh, they, they are, yeah, they, yeah, I guess, by American standards, it's hard to compare. Um, who were the Ghibellines? Don't forget, they were also the rich group. All right, how about... Number six, who were the white and black guilds? Nobody remembers them? I know that Dante was a white. Yeah, um, we don't know what they disagreed on. What'd you get? Two families that grew into parties, political parties. So it was more than just two families, more like the McCoys and the Hatfields, but it was kind of like that, too. Don't know why they disagreed. And you're right. Uh, Dante was a Guelph because he's from Florence, and uh, he was of the white uh, family. Uh, you mark out paraphrases. I'm not going to ask you that. It's a good word, but we don't have time for it. However, we're going to leave an allegory. Who wants to tell me about an allegory? Nobody remembers an allegory? Yes. Uh, it's use a story to point to another deeper meaning or something else. Okay, and I'm going to I'm going to add to that a little bit uh, because. All stories could do that. Any story could point to a different meaning. That doesn't, that's not precise enough for allegory. Allegory is a story, key, it's a story, with two meanings simultaneously. All right? One is literal and one is figuratively. So when I say literal and, and figurative, almost everything in, you know, everything's literal that happens to Dante. But almost everything in it is also symbolic. So everything, every person, every every geographical figure, everything that happens, all is that all of those are also have meaning. And so that's what makes something an allegory. All right. All right and how is Don how is divine comedy one? What are the two meanings? What? So, literally, yeah. you, this is how you'd answer it. Literally, he's traveling through hell. He's not literally traveling through hell. In, in, so, figuratively, what is he doing? Traveling for sins. Right. Learning about the nature of sin and how one must repent of it to return to God. All right, how about a tercet? Yes, that's all you have to say. 
simple, simple. All right, terzerama, I see that same kind of word there, so it must have something to do with free. What is a terza rhyme or terza rhyme? Say it again. Three lines that rhyme? Yeah, a, a rhyme scheme. I like the first, I think you said rhyme scheme. And remember, I think somewhere up here, remember how, well, it, it links first and third, second and fourth, and sixth. So it links oh, each like terza. A, B, a, B, C, B. That's right. It takes one word from the first stanza and starts a new rhyme in the second. Are we going to have to give like an example of that with us? No. Terza Rima, Terza Rima. Okay, name the three animals. Oh, What was the definition for Terza Rima? Let me finish this first. Where are the three animals? Right. And I think it would be useful to figure out what each represents. So that's the next question. Somebody want to answer that? Yeah, Nelia. Um, I know like the lines like kind of wrath and anger. That kind of Violence. Violence. Okay. That's not wrath or anger, that's violence, because wrath or anger is actually a different category. And then the wolf is like slightest and like deceptiveness. Say it again. Uh, deceptive. Yeah, deception, all right. And then, I can't remember the exact word, but like the leopard sort of like, almost like gluttonous or something. Well, what's the word? Incontinence. That's the word you need to use. All right, incontinence, we all know what that means, all right? All right, your question was about terza rima. It's a three, it's a rhyme scheme for the play, or for the poet. It's the rhyme scheme of the poet. Um, all right, we did 12. On what day of the week does the story begin? Yeah, you could, either one I will accept, because uh, the, the, the introduction, the first stanza, first Canto really takes place on Thursday, so I'd accept that. But so it depends on how I ask it. So I'm going to give both answers as correct, or Friday, because they good Friday. When does it end? Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday. All right. Upon what? Uh, yeah, that's 14. So we did 13 and 14. Uh, 15. Where does Inferno begin? In the woods, like Darkwood. The Darkwood. What does that mountain. represent? What? He's trying to get up a mountain. The narrow. But what do those things represent? Business mistakes, like people's choices. Say it again. Business mistakes, like people's choices. Um, yeah, let me add to that. Is it the narrow path? Like, what, what does that represent? Oh, like in the Bible, he's like, um, there's like the wide path. And the right. Path. So what do those represent? Heaven. Uh, trying to get to God. The way to heaven and hell. Right. Yeah. Um, he's lost kind of in his faith. And right. Especially on the way back. I like that answer best because it tells his spiritual condition that he's he's wandered from God. He's no longer his faith is weakened. He, I don't know if he does longer believes, but whatever you want to call it, he's lost. Stop. Um, we don't know abortion. Yeah, we did that. That's uh, Easter Sunday. All right, sixteen. How does Dante initially try to leave the woods? Oh, did he try? Yeah, he tries. He so tries. He I'm asking Ben. He goes up a mountain. What? Why does he go up a mountain? To what, get away from what, the, what does he the see at the top? Uh, the light. All right, which is God. Yeah, so he yeah. wants to go to God. He's not trying to run away from anything except the woods. Oh. So he's trying to go to God. What keeps him from getting to oh, God? The animals. Which represent what? Sins. Sins is what keeps all of us away from God. The animals like keep yeah. going? That, which represents sins. Yeah. So it's a beautiful picture of trying on your own to get back to God, but you can't because your sins prevent that. Um, somebody want to quote the gate of hell? I know I didn't ask you to do much of that yet. Yeah. Okay. Abandon hope all you who enter here. Yes. So it's a, one more time. Abandon hope all you who enter here. Yeah. I was wanted to put that in like a uh, lawyer's office. That should be at the beginning of your piece. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. 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 That's the sign. The last part is an ice skating rink. All right. <laughs> let's keep moving. What kind of sinners <laughs> reside in the vestibule? Uh, those who didn't do anything. Hey, guys, we're going to miss the point here. Say it again. The, the people who like, didn't do good 
good or bad. They were just kind of lazy. Couldn't, like, couldn't yeah. Indecisive, yeah. right? They think they could just hide, not join anything, not believe in anything. And uh, how were they being punished? Um, they were forced to run around and be chased by fiends. Toward Wasps. what? Uh, nothing. Well, oh. a, toward a decision like represented by the animal. flag, but they can oh, never get they're it. they're running towards the flag? That's right. And well, the flag represents the decisions they've never made about anything, the belief they've never had in anything except maybe themselves. Why don't uh, they just not, like, why don't they just not run the flag? Well, because of the hornets. They're, they're goading them, it says, and so they'd rather not be stung, so they run. It seems like you would run the and then when they fall, they have worms that will Yeah, the worms are, are part of that. Wait, what was number 18? Oh, yeah, we did skip 18. It is Acheron. Um, all right, let's go to 20. Try to stay focused because your talking may prevent somebody from hearing the answer. Um, ladies, that would be good. All right, who lives in limbo and what is their sin? Yeah, we called them that. And then there was also like a bunch of people from the Old Testament that Jesus like kicked to heaven or something. The patriarchs. That one. Um, remember, there's no punishment there. It's actually kind of lovely for hell. Um, it's got grain grass. It's got a castle. It's got a light. But these represent human things. And that's not enough to get you into heaven. Human wisdom not enough to get you there. Um, all right, 21, how are the lustful punished? They were whirled around. How they whirled around? The wind carries them away. What does that represent? Their lack of self-control. Yeah, they just go with the flow. They just go with their emotions or their feelings and get carried away. And so you like that, and you can do that forever. So if it's not as much fun, not fun at all. It's punishment. The sin becomes the punishment. Think of it. That's the kind of way this thing is based. Whatever your sin is, we, we enjoy it somewhat here. In hell, that sin will become the very thing that you hate the most. Uh, it punishes you. Maybe people will send their kids to my theme park. Maybe so. I'm just like, yeah, this is where we'll go. Miss Bean and John. All right, Walsh. Tell me about Francesca and Paolo. <laughs> Guys, I, I don't want you to miss out. We've only got 15 minutes. Francesca and Paolo. Aren't they the two lovers who did not regret their sin? Yes. And remember, Francesca uh, had this affair with her brother in law. And the husband killed her. Hey, bro. Oh, so All right, 23. How are the gluttons punished? Wait, All right, that's one of the ways. What does Cerberus yeah, represent? That's, 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 hey guys? They're, like, they're working for food. Like, eating all the time. They're actually eating all the time. They are? Yeah. Like, they're not like eating all the time. They're robbing away, right? Perpetual rain, and then they're being followed by Cerberus. Right, but what does Cerberus represent? Yeah. Uncontrollable uh, appetite. So, Cerberus, the appetite, is now eating the glutton instead of the other way around. The glutton was doing all the eating. Now the glutton is food for the appetite. He always, it always was. He's feeding your appetite. And your, your appetite is really eating you up. That's how we would say it. Um, Chaco, I heard that means... Wait, what was the second reason? Rain. The rain oh, and the yeah. mud and the... Yeah, all that. Um, hoarders and spendthrifts. Right, let me let me just do some of this to quicken the pace here. Remember, they are guilty of materialism, either by hoarding it or by buying it, and usually it takes both. Um, so they're being punished by pushing around the boulder, tugging at it, pushing it. Um, what was fun in this world became becomes a burden in hell. The boulder <coughs> represents the material things that they put so much stock in and it becomes a burden for them. And why could no one, why could he not recognize anyone there? Yes. Was it because like they couldn't distinguish between what's important and then they 
That's right. They can't tell what's valuable and what's not valuable. So now they can't be distinguished. Nobody can distinguish them. 26. Remember, luck is a heavenly minister that apportions what we call luck out to people. Like, this person wins the lottery. It wasn't by luck. It was, it was somehow appointed to be. A, 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 a heavenly minister who apportions, who dishes out all the, the good things, or maybe even the bad things. Like 27. The two kinds of wrathful. Okay, tell me the difference. Okay, so then they were like under the water and then wrathful spot. Oh, right. What's the first one? Okay, active and passive. The active are fighting in the river stick, and the passive are drowning in the river stick. Um, let me go, go through this. The ferryman of sticks, number 28, is fleeches. Okay, why is he not? Because there's a river in the he didn't kill anybody. He just burned down Apollo's temple. Wait, so he no, gets to drive a boat. Why did they make it the same thing, but different? I can't tell you why why he preferred to do it that way, but that's why he did it. Wait, why did you choose him to do the boat? Because he was he was a wrathful, angry man. He burned down Apollo's temple. So he kind of got lucky that he doesn't have to be in the river. Yeah, I mean, people like... What, what I call it that. People like Carl make it the same thing. All right, 29. We're running out of time, guys. Um, Philippe Argente was the one who tried to stop Dante. It re reared, reared up onto the boat. He was uh, thrust out by Virgil and Dante. Com commented, Virgil commented Dante because Dante had shown no pity to this man. Um, and you shouldn't pity sin or sinners in hell. You can pity them here, but in hell it's too late. To, none of your pity. Remember, abandon all hope. There's no point for pity. But it's also the way you treat your own sin. And that's that was a good sign. So he tried to stop Dante? Yeah, but he pushed Don Virgil, he pushed uh, Filippo back and was rude to him. All right, 29, um, 30. What significance of Dante's reaction, his his attitude towards sin and his own sin has, has changed. He now resents it, disgusts him, and you treat things that disgust you that way. City of Dis. Describe it. It's, it has edifice like cities. It's burning red hot. It has walls and a gate. But it's burning hot because what's going on in there is the punishment of the heretics. And this is the first time you see demons in hell is at the city of death. This is the city of Satan as opposed to the city of God, which you read back in the fall. All right, the Furies are there, and they, they're the ones who call um, Medusa to come and uh, look at Dante because they don't want him there. He's not supposed to be there. He's alive. And Wait, it's also why, out of vengeance. Why is the burning coffin significant? Well, we're getting to that. All right? So the, the coffins are burning because two things. That's how heretics were treated. They would be burned at the stake. Secondly, the coffin represents their narrow, rigid beliefs that they refuse to change. Even when confronted with the truth, they stuck to their um, her her heresy. So the coffins are unchangeable, they're metal, or there's a cave, which is a tomb that you can't get out of. Farinata and Cavalcante are, are heretics. They represent, two people that know Dante, they represent Florence. They both are from Florence. Farinata was a political leader who murdered Florentines because he loved it. That's his story anyway. So he, he sort of represents a misguided love of country. And Cavalcante, not so much misguided, but he loved his son. But they're in hell because they're heretics. They teach false truth, false things. Um, Min the Minotaur. The Minotaur and the Centaurs are all in the same circle. Remember, he half bull, half man, um, has to, Virgil distracts him by um, trash talking, calling him names. They get around him. And then they go down the tumbled rocks. That's the only word that I know to call them, the tumbled rocks. That's how they get from 
uh, six to seven, circle six to seven. And when they get to seven, they find the river Phlegethon, which is the river of burning blood. And who's in them? The violent tyrants, the ones who killed lots of people. And so they are being boiled in the blood of their victim. The blood is getting revenge. Uh, the centaurs are also there, half um, horse, half man, and they're shooting arrows at anybody who tries to get out of the burning river. All right, Chiron and Nessus are two of these centaurs. Chiron, he's sort of the leader of the three, and he is the, um, he was the tutor of Achilles. Nessus was also in mythology, but his role here is to carry Dante across the river. All right, the three rings of violence, remember there are, it should be on the board behind me somewhere. And the order that they're presented uh, would be um, um, sorry, blasphemy. No, that's not it. What's the first? Favor, so Favor, so no. Thank you. It's the three rings of violence are the one we're in right now, the river of Fedra, and that's neighbors. Okay. And then self, and then God. So we just did the one about the, the tyrants and the neighbors. What two sins are punished in the forest? Um, suicide and gambling. gambling. And that's where you meet Pierre Del Vigne, it's where you meet Lano and Giacomo. Gambling, gambling, yeah. Pierre Del Vigne killed himself. Lano and Chaco, Giacomo, they uh, they were vandals and arsons, destroyers. Um, the, what happens to the people in the suicide woods? They turn into trees. Yeah, because they re, they're not allowed to re-inhabit their body. When they get their bodies back. They have a spiritual body now that's now a part of the tree. But when they get their physical bodies back, they'll they'll have to see it hanging in front of them forever. Wait, so Giacomo was one that committed suicide? No, Giacomo was a gambler. Oh, Atlanta was And suicide. they're being the fury, not the furies, but the, um, what are the birds called? The harpies. The harpies are part of that, but also dogs come and rip the limbs. And, so do we do so gambling? Um, they're punished by being ripped and chased and... Um, do we need to know how they died? Because I know one of them died in like a battle or something. Uh, if you know that, it's fine. But I, I, don't, I don't think I'm going to ask you, but you, but you know it. Who's Lano? Lano is one of the gamblers. He also he, he sold his own property, burned it, and died in a war. Uh, Latini, Latini is his tutor. What that, I think it's a awful sounding word, sodomites or sodomy. Um, it's the sin of homosexuality and they sin against the body that God created and the nature of the body and how it should be used. So they look at it. Capanius was guilty of direct, it's number 46, direct blasphemy of God, defiance of God. So he has to look at God forever. Um, and Dante, or Bruno Latini had to look at his body as were all the other people around him because they sinned against that. And then there were the usurers. You just need to know what that word means, which is charging excess interest. So we got Capanius, Bruno, Bruno, Brunetto, Latini. It's Brunetto. I don't think it's, I spelled that right. Finally, the punishments and violence. We just kind of did that. The boiling water the wood of suicides, the dogs, the harpies, and the burning sand and the falling fire from above. And finally, the three faces of Satan, red, black, and yellow, that represent, yes, and that which represent Europe, which is Japheth, Africa, which is Ham, and Asia, which is Shem. Ever heard the word anti-Semitic? Yes. I don't Can you say that? Okay. Shem was one of the three signs. He had the yellow face, and he represents the Middle East or Asia. 
JFAT had the red face, he represented Europe, and Ham represents Africa. And I mentioned, if you ever heard the word anti-Semitic, it means uh, usually anti-Jewish. You have your prejudice against Jews. I can't hear you. That's what the Bible kind of indicates that direction. Like the, the JPEG migrated north, uh, Ham migrated south. So if you look at Israel, if you look at Turkey, where the ark would have been. Well, now, Yeah, and there's more to that story if you want to look it up. It's in, it's in um, Genesis. Three faces. Of, don't forget the three sinners that are being killed, eaten. And um, again, just please know this. I, I didn't get, I don't think I came around yet. I've done one class. I'm not worried about it. I'll check it tomorrow. Maybe I'll check it thir uh, Friday. But I want to give you credit for the study guide and these, I mean, the study guide questions and the review sheet. So please, homework, but that, that helps. Please study. Um, I'll try to narrow, I gotta have to edit it a little bit to get it down closer to 40 minutes.